Hey guys, I have a great topic for you on the podcast today, a small piece, a paragraph from a press conference from Brent Venables, the new head football coach at the University of Oklahoma. He is talking about developing players, getting them ready for the upcoming year through practice, the first week of practice, but I found a ton of business and life advice in it. So I'm going to translate that for you on the podcast today. So business and life advice about dedication, leadership, confidence, and how you earn great things through hard work on the podcast today. So it's Saturday. I'm in the office. You know what that means. The Saturday morning hustle podcast. We come in early. We stay late. We work on weekends. We earn it because the next big thing is not happening Monday through Friday and getting to that next level is not nine to five. So today we're going to translate a paragraph from the Brent Venables OU football coach press conference this week, again, talking about dedication, leadership, self-development, and apply that to business and life the way we do on this podcast as a regular basis. So I'm going to begin by reading the paragraph that caught my attention. I was listening to this on the radio when I was driving to work a few days ago, and it caught my attention. And so I went and found it online and translated this here for you. I picked the select paragraph I really want to talk about and focus on the podcast today. So here is the quotes directly from OU football head coach, Brent Venables. Remember, this is his first year as a head coach. He came in over the summer, lots of controversy. He's only been practicing with this team for a week, but he helped recruit some of these players. He inherited a lot of these players, and they have worked a little bit over the summer in an an unofficial sense. This is the first time they put on the pads and really put it work in. And this question came on the heels of, the strength and conditioning coach worked with him all summer, and he has a reputation for being a real hard ass, making people really work hard. So that's the context of this quote. Our guys feel confident because of the work they put in. That's where you get your swag and your edge is by the work you put in, not because of people talking about you. Our guys have a genuine edge to them right now. They're hungry. I love the engagement of this group of players. They're engaged as opposed to just going to practice. It's easy to just go to practice. Our guys have been engaged and very purposeful, one day at a time, showing up with goals and a focus about them. This gives you a chance to have daily improvements. That's been a lot of fun to watch happen. For them to respect what it takes, because what we're asking them to do is really, really hard. So there you have the definition of confidence, and personal growth from the University of Oklahoma head football coach Brent Venables, his first year as head coach, been a assistant for a long time, played or coached, played college football, coached at the University of Oklahoma under co- Coach Bob Stoops as a defensive coordinator, is back as the head coach first year. So I'm going to break down each of these lines and explain what it means to business and personal life outside of football. So line number one, feel confident because of the work that you put in, not because people are talking about you. It's not about making other people like you, making other people appreciate you, and obviously not putting your self-worth in the opinions of other people. But by doing work, by doing continual development, by trying to better yourself. You've heard me say many times on this podcast that there's no such thing as competition. It's you versus you. It's you getting better every day. What other people are doing uh, when they're your business competitors is irrelevant if you're improving daily and focusing on what it is you should be doing, what you can be doing best. This is the same thing. Feel confident because the work you put in, he's talking about the football players at practice, in the weight room, in the film study, at on the practice field, getting better as football players, not because other people are telling them they're great, they're on a great team, that they're going to do great things, but because they've done the work, the preparation, they understand what they need to do on the field, they're physically ready for it, they have stamina, they have strength, They understand the process. They understand the plays. They understand what the coaches are talking about when they give them instructions. They have put in the work. And it's not, they're not, so that can make them great because being great isn't because someone else thinks you're great or someone else says you're great. And often our personal views of ourselves get really tied up in what other people think of us. It's not about what other people think of us. It's how well we are continually developing ourselves. So that's line number one. Next quote. They're engaged as opposed to just going to practice. 
That's right. You could just go to practice. And by just, this is the key word here, just. You can practice. You can get marginally better if you just go to practice. But if you are engaged, if you show up at practice with the idea that you're going to get the best out of it, that you're going to max, that you're going to do a personal best every day, that continual self-improvement, if that is your attitude, if that is your attempt to engage, to, to squeeze every ounce out of practice or when you go to work or when you engage with your boss or when you meet with your coworkers or when you are in a performance review or own in self, self-constructive criticism, can you look back at every day and say, how could I have done that better? What could I have done more? How can I improve myself every day? That is engagement. So you can go through the motions and you might even improve a little bit or make things better for the group or for the team or for the business by going through your through the motions. But to be engaged and to actively participate in self-building and self-improvement every single chance you get, that's where real growth comes from. So that's what purpose fullness engagement will do for you one day at a time showing up with goals and focusing on them one day at a time continual improvement every day it's not about being the best it's about being better than you were yesterday and the day before and the day before it's one day at a time showing up with goals you can't just say i want to get better you can't just say i want to get the i want to be the best uh, in this or to, in this context of football it's if if your 40 yard dash time is a four eight, obviously you want a four seven nine, and then a four seven six, and then a four seven two, and then a four seven, because that's measurable results. If you're running a business, there are ways to measure results. So there is engagement, activity. There is conversion rate. There is all kinds of metrics, all kinds of ways to measure. Because if you set a goal, so again you could set goals, nice big high goals to double sales over the next year to gain the most market share to be the leading business in your industry these are goals they're big they're not measurable but goals get broken down into objectives objectives are measurable so if you're going to double sales your objectives have to be of course that you have to increase sales by 10 percent, and then 20 percent, and then 30 percent, and so on and so on now you have goals, you have objectives, you have something measurable, you have something you can move towards and you know how you can improve every day or if you're failing to improve or even worse, if you're going in the wrong direction, if you're backsliding. So you know how much effort is needed, you know what's working, what's not working, how you continue to do things that work better and don't do things that work don't work as well because you're trying to reach objectives which ultimately lead you to your goals. Set goals and then go after them every day. Every day, get better. Every day. Go after the objective. Eventually, when you reach all your objectives, you've reached your goals. Daily improvement. It's simple enough. I don't have to explain this to you folks. If you improve daily, if you improve on a regular basis, if you improve every chance you get, and if you have the attitude about it and you go through the practice of daily improvement, you will eventually get much better than where you are. And again, it's not about beating the competition. It's not about knocking someone else out. It's not about taking someone else's spot. It's not about moving people away from your opportunities. It's about self-improvement. When you self-improve, when you increase yourself, your business, your organization, your team every day, you will start to get more wins than losses. You will get more no's than yes, more yeses than no's. I'm going to say that backwards. Because you have improved yourself to that level. You've earned it through self-improvement. Self-improvement every day. Daily improvement is what Coach Venable says. I agree with that completely. He says it's been fun to watch. Now think about this one, and it could have been a sentence that you didn't notice the first time I read it, but it really impacted me. It's been fun to watch. He is the head coach. He's the leader. He's the CEO in the situation. There are results that are expected from him and expected from his staff and expected from his players and expected of the program overall. He knows it's been fun to watch, or he understands he sees the benefit of each and every one of his players being engaged, daily improving, not just practicing, but actually engaged practice and setting daily improvement goals. He knows 
when they do that, they're going to reach their goals as a staff and as a program. He also knows that leaders do not lead from above, do not give commands from above, do not say this is how things have to be and not worry about the people involved and the processes in every subsection of the organization. So for him to be successful, he could be one of those leaders who sits at the top and says, everyone do what I tell you to so that I can be successful as the leader. Or as Coach Finnables does, and this is why it is fun for him, the statement he said it's fun to watch, is he understands that when he goes the other direction, when he goes and lifts up all of his players, when he supports the young men in the program, when he supports his staff, when he supports the people that work at the university, the, the professors and the training staff and the medical staff, and the administration and everyone else. When he plays his role by supporting all of them, by getting them to achieve their goals, by getting them to be engaged and improve daily, by, and by doing that, by getting the players, the young men that are going to be on the field to develop themselves, to reach their personal goals, they will reach team goals. And ultimately the program could be successful to have wins on the field and they'll do all the, the right things off the field as well. And then the leader, the coach, will be seen as successful. So it is fun for him to see the players develop themselves, to develop as players, to develop as people. It's the same thing when you're the CEO. You have to develop your people. You have to engage your people. You have to get your people to improve themselves every day, and then they will be better at their job. It's that simple. You don't force people to be good at the job that they do for you and their role in your organization, you engage and help and support them be better people who can do their job better every day, who set goals for themselves, who look at for daily improvement, who are engaged because you as the leader from the top down having, have encouraged that, supported that, and made that possible. When you do that, when you put that work in, and then it pays off, and you see people being successful at their job and successful in the role for their business, then the business is better, everyone benefits, but you also know that as people, they're engaged, they're participating, and they feel better about themselves, not because other people talk about them, but because they did the work, they earned it. You know they're developing as people as well, and that, as a leader, as a CEO, as the head coach, is fun to watch. So it's not about people achieving Coach Venable's goals. It's about each of the players achieving theirs, working as groups, as team mates, as the offense and the defense, and then ultimately as the whole team. If they do all those things, the success of the whole team will come. The same thing in business. When you put people in the right position, when you support them, when you develop them, when you keep them engaged, when you lead them, not tell them what to do, but lead them, the success of the organization, the potential goes way up. And as a leader, it is fun to watch and fun to do. You also improve your staff every day and you keep them. They're not looking for their jobs and aren't going other places. It's not about money. It's not about anything more than their personal development and their personal engagement and earning great things because it's hard. Hard things are great things. That's the last quote here. For them to respect what it takes. Because we're asking them to do what we're asking them to do is really, really hard. Now think about that in the context of what he's speaking about. To be one of the best college football programs in the country, to be considered top five, to be considered for a national title, to be at that level for that sport. And you don't have to be a sports fan to understand that they're operating at a very high level. When you're talking about the top five in the country, when you're talking about some of the best of the best, what they're trying to get them to do is very, very hard. There's preparation. There's working in the gym. There's eating right. There's, there's doing the exercises. There's watching film, reading their playbook, working with their, their small groups and their team and working with the coaches and taking instruction all while going to college and having a normal life of an 18, 19, 20, 21 year old person. What they're asking them to do is very hard, but you have to respect what it takes to do hard things. If it was easy, everyone would do it. You've heard that from many people many times in many ways. This is the same thing here. If you want to be on one of the top five 
D1 football programs in the country, you have to do hard work. And when you do the hard work, it is respectable. You earn it. You put in the work, you receive the spoils. You receive the benefits of that hard work. It's the same thing in business, whether you're the boss, you're the entrepreneur, you're the leader, or you're the employee trying to move your way up from the third string to the second string to the starter. You want to, you want to, you want to be the best player on the best team. You want to do your best, earn the most, have the most opportunities, benefit from that, do the most with it. That's hard work. That's hard to do. To be the best is hard, but it's respectable and you can earn it if you're willing to do the hard work and respect the process. This is what the coach is saying by respect what it takes because what they're asking to do them is very, very hard. If it was easy, everyone would do it. Great things are hard. Great things require work, patience, effort, and continual process, continual self-improvement, et cetera. All the things we've talked about today go into earning great success, doing great things, doing things that are hard. But because they're hard, they're worth it. So much like trying to become the starting quarterback at the University of Oklahoma for one of the top five D1 programs in the country, or just being the best at what it is you do, be the best employee where you work, to make your business profitable, to make your art career successful, to achieve what it is you want to achieve and personally benefit and personally gain and personally grow every single day, it's very, very hard. You got to do the work. but if you do, you will have earned it, and we will all respect you. So just some things to think about from Coach Venables. It caught me in this press conference. That paragraph really stuck with me. I went on the internet. I found it. I've put a clip on YouTube of just that, so you don't have to listen to the whole press conference if you want to hear it directly from the man himself. Thanks so much for listening, streaming, and subscribing to the Saturday Morning Hustle podcast. Please leave a comment, leave a review, share with a friend. I would appreciate it greatly. Make sure you get your Saturday Morning Hustle, Coffee and Donuts, Entrepreneur AF Swag as well at the swag store, SaturdayMorningHustle.com. Follow on social media as well, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, the Facebook fan page. Don't forget, you can become a fan on the Facebook fan page as well. Never miss an episode of this podcast. Also, the Professional Balance bonus series I put out the last Monday of each month. There's a new series of that up right now as well. A new episode of Balance. Go check that out when you get a chance as well. Appreciate it. Appreciate you each and every Saturday tuning into the Saturday Morning Hustle. And as always, check out SaturdayMorningHustle.com. It's Saturday. I'm in the office. This is a Saturday Morning Hustle for anyone willing to come in early, stay late, or work on the weekend to achieve their own goals, their own success, and to do things that are really hard, but they're worth it. See you next week. Saturday Morning Hustle. Saturday Morning Hustle. Saturday Morning Hustle. Wake up and keep chasing.